was a friendly meeting, friendly encounter. And I mean, they took on the way they were going. And I, I uh, offered my condolences for the relatives who lost them in the bereavement. كذلك هم عزوني على ابني التي فقدت فيها بارة أمريكية البرمانية ستطمئنين على بيتي yeah, they also uh, expressed their condolences for my daughter who was killed during the American raid in 86 the 1986 raid yes. it was very, was very sentimental and very uh, touched the, the, the meeting so you understand the grief of these, these people? Of course, of course. It is a tragedy. It is a catastrophe. And, and do you regret any possible role that officials of the Libyan government might have played? No one, no one would support an action like that or would not be touched and moved by such a tragedy. Whether it is Lokurbi or whether it is the 86 raid against Libya. We are all families of the victims, relatives of the victims, because resorting to violence, because as a result of violence, as a result of terror. Terror in all its forms is a common enemy to all of us. If you're confused, so are we, because it doesn't sound like he's owning up in that interview. But he did speak about the 1986 raid. That's the one he was talking about there when he was referring to his daughter. Let me give you some background on this. This is important. I'll take you through the story. In that reference, it was April 14th of that year, President Ronald Reagan did order airstrikes on Tripoli that are believed to have killed some 40 people, including Gaddafi's 15-month-old daughter. That's, imp that's important. But you know what else is important? Perspective on that. Why did President Reagan do that? Well, let me show you these pictures now. Here's something Gaddafi didn't mention when he was talking to Zakaria. Just days before that raid, there was a bombing of a disco in Berlin. The place was packed with American troops. Two Americans and a Turkish woman were killed. Scores of others were badly burned. That's important. The prime suspect in the case in this bombing, Libya. All right, now I want to do this. I want to bring in one of the family members who met with Gaddafi. This is Lisa Gibson. Uh, it's her brother, Ken Gibson, who was one of the passengers. There he is. He was uh, on that plane, and he was killed. And Lisa's good enough to join us now. Lisa, how are you doing? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Look, I don't feel, after listening to what he told Fareed there, that he was apologizing. As a matter of fact, I mean, let, let me even be a little more specific. Let me look at these notes. You tell me if I'm wrong. Uh, when he was asked uh, point blank about regrets and... He then rationalized and stammered. He says, no one will support an action like that. Well, guess what? His government did support an action like that. That's why they paid $2.7 billion in restitution, right? I mean, as far as uh, the world is concerned, there was a conviction, there was an acceptance of responsibility, and there was a payment of civil damages. So from the world's perspective, uh, they have accepted responsibility, and I think that's what's most important. Okay, so you walk into this meeting with uh, Mr. Gaddafi, and I would expect, if I were you, that he would come to you and he would say, I'm sorry for what my country did to your loved one and those 600, 169 other people. Uh, and I take responsibility in some way. Did he say that? Did he own up? No, in, in fact, Libya has always said that they were not responsible. And so that's has been the posture that they have taken consistently. And even when I wrote a letter of forgiveness to Megrahi in prison, he himself apologized for the law, saying he was sorry for what happened to my brother, but even then saying that but he wasn't responsible. So essentially, what did Gaddafi say to you? Take us through that meeting from the first uh, meeting of your eyes through the first handshake. What happened? What did you say? What did he say? Well, all along, I've, I've taken the posture of, of re reaching out to Libya, hoping to build a bridge of reconciliation. As far as I'm concerned, only God knows if they're really responsible. So that's the posture I've taken. I've but wait, but wait, but wait, but wait. He, I, I'm, I'm reading here. Am I wrong? It's not just God that knows he's responsible. 
I'm Rick Sanchez that knows he's responsible, and I'm nowhere near heaven. Hope to one day get there. I'm reading. He paid $2.7 billion in restitution. Two of the people involved were Libyan agents, and al Megrahi himself was a Libyan agent. He was responsible, was he not? As I said, as far as the world's concerned, he was in fact responsible. So the posture now from my perspective is to focus on the future. I think justice was done, and now we want to focus on reconciling and focusing on prevention of future uh, terrorist attacks, and that's why I'm doing the work that I'm doing I, I, in Libya. I admire that. I really do. I wonder if other Americans, including myself, would be able to, to do that. I mean, you're, you're obviously a very benevolent person. What do you say to some of the other family members who criticize you for meeting with this guy and they say that by meeting with him you're getting you're giving him more cred than he deserves what do you say to them i think that uh, the heart of what i'm about is to be an ambassador of reconciliation is to, to show my faith requires me to forgive and to find a way to love my enemies this is america we have the right to do and uh, believe what it is we choose i understand that not everyone agrees with this that i'm really taking the road less traveled but yeah. I, i'll tell you that it means a lot to the libyan people i've had the privilege of going there three times and e every single time i go people are um, so thankful that I'm willing to come and, and to meet them and to find out what their lives have like. And I've actually had conversations with people about the 1986 mm. uh, terrorist uh, bombing, excuse me, of uh, Tripoli and and all of that to find out what it's been like for them. And they've authentically uh, appreciated my willingness to come there and do that. You're holding your ground. Good for you, Lisa. Uh, thanks so much. Uh, a lot of people will criticize you. A lot of people will find fault with what you're saying and what you do. But you seem to be true to what you believe. We thank you for being on. Thank you for having me. Tonight's newsmaker is Michael Moore. He says that unfettered greed and capitalism are ruining this country. My interview with him is coming up in just a little.